two player games, <clears throat> two versus two, that works. Sure. Except it's two v two, man. That whole movie almost is about was two about v two. two pilots against two pilots. Come on, man. Oh, I believe it. I, Top Gun. I regret two versus two. I regret nothing. All right. Kind okay. Of. So, today's top 10 list is <laughs> 2v2 games. It's about games in which a team of two plays against another team of two. That is correct. Like Top Gun. <laughs> Got it. Yes. <laughs> now, so the way we talked about this was if you have two people, four people, and you want to play two against another two, we're not saying these games are best 2v2. That's, that's for sure. If you have four folks and some of them want to cooperate, but not everybody wants to necessarily <laughs> cooperate, two no, there's two. Okay, so when I first thought of this uh, list, I thought, okay, there's two major genres for this, and that's going to be war games where you can split the sides up, and um, you know, you could, and um, party games, trick-taking games. Well, then that party games would be the third yeah, one. Yeah. However, there are games that do not fall in that category, and I have a couple of those on my list, actually, because of that reasoning. Yeah, I also I think, so. I, I, I know we're going to have crossover. We've got to, just because this is not a huge category. You think so? Well, I don't think it's a huge, you think it is? No, no, I, no, it's not. I had a really hard time coming out. Oh, well, then, therefore, I, I, I think, think by very gonna... nature, I'm going to cross over with Z at least once. Okay. Maybe, maybe only once. Okay. And with Sam, I'm going to cross over at least once, but maybe only once. Never mind. So that lot of crossover was a lie. Some crossover. Well, it wasn't a lie. It was just a misprediction. So two v two. Uh, who's the other person? Is there a visible just, person there? You just lost me, bro. I don't know. <laughs> two crossovers versus two crossovers. That's what that was. That's the worst. That is the cut. Go to 10. Wow. Number 10. Now, my number 10 is uh, a game. <laughs> well, good. Yeah. So far, so good. Check. <laughs> uh, and it's it's the only code names that I will actually put on the top 10 list because it's the only code names that I like, and that's code names pictures. There we go. He has to say that every time. I do. What if the list was a negative list? <laughs> you would put some of the other code names on a list. <laughs> Top ten code names I wouldn't play, for example. No. <laughs> well, Top, I like you know, code I like, names Disney. I like code, code names, names the duel as well. Code names so, duet. Uh, uh -huh. duet. Duet. Yeah, yeah. Which cannot. Although Board Game Geek put this in that category. <laughs> it did. I was looking at partnerships and it put code names duet. And I was like, that's not how that works. Anyway. Uh, I guess it's cooperative. I, I wouldn't necessarily call it partnership un unless true. those things are the same. You're right. You're right. Yeah, I, I withdraw my thing. But anyway, Codenames Pictures, or I Harry think, Potter, works very well. This is one of the th this is one of the reasons it might probably should have been put higher on the list. I just enjoy playing these other games better. Yeah. Uh, but it, it actually works really well with just four players. Yeah. When you have uh, one clue giver with his team member and then you have another clue giver with his team member, that works really well, especially in Codenames Pictures. So that's why it's on my list. I enjoy the game and I think it really does work well within within the list's parameters. I think it's a good pick. Is that, uh, having said that, is this your favorite way to play it? Two versus two? Maybe. Yes. I like three, I think, versus three myself. Yes for me, though. Yeah. Um, I, I I, don't mind the party style of it when you play the group against a group, right, and there's multiple people guessing. That's fine, you know, and there's some interaction. Uh, but two versus two is very it's much a like... a thinky game. It's like, yeah. And you're like sitting there, and it's very stressful. Uh, yeah, yeah. I, I don't know. I like it. I like uh, maybe being able to blame somebody else for my mistakes, so maybe that's why I like three versus three, you know? <laughs> I Got think it. It, it toes the line between a big party game and that, you know, oh, if I make a mistake, it's my fault, like if we don't do this right, you know. Yep. All right, my number 10 is a party game from yesteryear called 25 Words or Less. And this is a, a party game in which um, you break off into teams, of course. Someone's going to draw a card. One player from each team will look at that card. It's got five words on there or something. And then, uh, maybe six words, and then the two clue givers, those people that looked at that card, will try to underbid each other 
for how many words they can say in order to get their partner to guess all the words on that card. So they might be like, okay, well, I can do it in 20 words. I can give them enough 20 words and they'll get all of these. Well, I can do it in 18, 17, 16, blah, 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 blah. Somebody eventually says, you know, I'll do it in 10. Like, okay, do it. And then if they can do it in 10, they get the points. If not, the other team gets it. Very simple concept. A little code namey. But again, this is much older. And uh, 2v2 is the way to play this. You want to have one clue giver up against one brain. Thinking about what those words might mean. I really enjoy it that way. I like um, this game. My only concern is it falls prey to the fact that somebody might never get the play. That's true. Yeah, they might win even, but they might not have played. Right, and that's not fun. You're right. Uh, probably if I was to re-release this today, a couple of tweaks would go a long way. I think you could still do the bidding, but then both players would have to give their clues separately. I don't know how you would do yeah, that. Yeah. Maybe write them down or whatever. That would be really slow. But sure. Yeah, but it's a neat game anyway, and one that's largely been forgotten, but uh, I've deserves never heard of this game. Deserves some love. Let me tell you about it in 25 words or less. 24 words. <laughs> I'll tell you about it in 23 words. You just took like you 200 took words. Like, yeah, <laughs> yeah. Fine. Sorry. You broke the game. Fine. My number 10, 25 <laughs> words or less. My number 10 is also a party game, and I actually like playing this one possibly with groups better than with 2v2, but it works really well as a 2v2 game, and that is Word on the Street. Yeah, I thought about it. Oh, really? Yeah, I almost put it on my this list. This is the, I'm not sure, this is the Educational Insights. I don't know if this one's like out right now. It was from Out of the Box Publishing. They've gone out of print. Um, but Word on the Street is a tug of war game. In the middle, there's a board in the middle of the board. You can see in the picture here, all these letters here. And you get a category. The category might be food. And then you come up with a word for your team, like spaghetti. And then I would move the S towards me once, the P, then the G, then the H, then the Spug. There's two T's, so I'd move the T towards me twice. Right. Okay. There's no vowels in the game. That's why I didn't. I skipped the vowels. Uh, although there is a kids version that does have the vowels. Okay. Either way, it's really fun because once you get a letter off the board, it's yours forever, and you get seven letters. You win. Meanwhile, you have to think. You're trying to think of a word that brings a, as many letters over as possible. But also, if your opponent's about to pop one on their side, you want to get that one over back towards right, you. Right, tug of war, yeah. It's five spaces on the board, but if you go outside, that's it. Yeah, this one's a really good game. And if it isn't in print, and it might be from Educational Insights, I don't know. If it isn't in print, I hope someone picks it up. Yeah. Because it's a pretty solid game, Word on the Street. Feels, well, like, not, it feels I, like an evergreen. I don't think I've played this game, but Word on the Street is that it's fun. And you said my jokes were bad? <laughs> Your jokes are fine compared to that abysmal piece of trash. <laughs> number nine. All right, my number nine. My number nine is actually pretty similar when you play it 2v2 to my number 10, but I like playing this one a little bit better. Time's up, title recall. Uh, now this one, of course, I really enjoy playing with a larger group of people. But just like with Codename Pictures, it does have that very cranial aspect to it when you have just uh, one team of two against another team of two. Mm -hmm. uh, and it does play a lot faster because you basically have fewer cards going on. Uh, and if you have that 2v2, it usually, you know, one or maybe even both of the people, uh, both of the teams rather, are, you know, syncing up pretty well. Sometimes it's one team is syncing up really well and the other team is like anti-syncing. Uh, but uh, <laughs> the thing about that, even, I have definitely even when seen that, that happen. Anti-syncing. The, the good thing about this game, even Roll when that happens, candidate. it's still fun. <laughs> this is one of those party games where being wrong is just as fun as being right. <laughs> you know what I mean? It's it's, true, yeah. You'll have a good time either way. Yeah, like yeah, getting yeah. something way wrong. Usually. It can be very frustrating. Unless however. you're out for blood, it's fun either way. <laughs> But I do, I do think it works well with four. Um, but I usually prefer having larger teams. And we've played this live in a modified version of it where um, one person gets up from the team mm -hmm. and gives clues to everybody, you know, gives their clues to everybody. And I, I enjoy that as well. But with uh, 2v2, I think this works well. It's my number nine, Time's Up title recall. This was on my short list. Oh, I figured this would be on your list. I know, I love Time's Up. But I thought to myself, 
I don't know that I would ever suggest this when I have two versus two. Of course, it depends on the people that you're. That you're no, I mean, just that I would probably play a different particular game because I really like. I don't mind the two teams, but I want there to be three, four, or five teams just because there's more stuff going on or have two big giant teams. Okay. Does 2v2 it, is fine. It's just not the list I'm putting this on. If you wouldn't pick this, time. what else would you pick? Tell me like nine other things you would pick instead of this. Uh, well, he'll get to it. Uh, sure, um, sure. <laughs> um, get anyways, I, I think I think that uh, with this game, the more people can be more fun, but I've... I don't think that we know. Unless, <laughs> wow, gee whiz, savage, hashtag savage. Um, I don't think that there have been, well, I'll put it this way. There have been many times where I've played with more people that we stopped playing before we went through all, all, all three rounds because it was taking too long. Sure. And with, four, with, with 2v2, this has never happened. There's 40 cards. And sometimes you just don't have... A whole lot of people that are syncing up, and it takes a long time. Okay, I get that. Yeah. So, mm. but you went to the other extreme. I'm just saying I don't know that I would play with only four people. I would probably want there to be six or eight. No, that's fine. Or seven. It works well with two, four though. All right, my number nine. I was gonna say my number four. I don't know why. My number nine is in the Parcheesi line of games. So and cheesy. this is a sorry. Uh, so cheesy. Yeah, sorry, Parcheesi. It's called Partners. And this is... Uh, Seems like a little on the nose here. <laughs> yeah, yeah, it is. This is a game from uh, the Nordic countries, and it is very much in that style, but without dice. It's card-driven, and you play two players versus two sitting across the table from each other. At the beginning of every round, you're going to shuffle up a deck of cards, deal each player four. You pass one card to your partner sitting across the table. They give you one. And then you play these cards to move your pawns out, to move around the board to try to get your pieces home. It follows a lot of those standard rules. Land on the other player, send them back, that kind of thing. It follows lots of those. This is better than a lot of those Parcheesi style games, but if I'm being honest, it is that kind of game. It is a very much a family weight, no pretentiousness whatsoever to this. I've played this with like my mom and, and non-gaming family members that goes over really well. You just don't want to bring this out to your gaming club, probably. Probably. Uh, but I enjoy it. It's a, it's a neat twist on that. I like the action cards in it are pretty straightforward, but they can lead to some fun choices, you know, fun moments where you play something. Like one of them is play a card, switch two pawns on the board. It's like massively overpowered, but nobody's thinking about that. So I like it. That's our partners. My number nine pick. No, I don't have anything to say because I. This is like a super rare game, at least in America. It is in America, yes. But again, you you have a re, you have a, a point of reference in in sorry or Porchisi or something. Got it. All right, my number nine. I thought briefly. I thought I wonder if any of the Access and Allies games might make my list because you could play. Access. I played Access with and Allies with four players a lot, where one person just played two of the Allies. It's a three versus two game, but it's very easy for one person to control two of the countries. Okay. Um, but I just don't like them that much enough to get on this list. So I got a game that's very similar, but it's been out of print for quite a few years now, and that's Conquest of Narath. Conquest of Narath is the Dungeons and Dragons Axis and Allies, essentially. And it is very specifically a two versus two other uh, game. I guess you could play one, one versus one, but you can see there's four different armies there. But you're, two of the armies are against the other armies. You are right in each other's face from the very beginning. There's all kinds of cool units that have different things. But it's, it's a fairly simple just, hey, go whoop up on the other person. Is there a you know? color missing from that picture? No, there's gray in the top corner. You can't see it. Yeah, okay. I really couldn't see it. All right. But I like the D&D &D theming here. This, as far as I can tell, this is the only Dungeons & Dragons war game of sorts that exists. You know, mm -hmm. there's all those small miniature dungeon crawl sure. ones. And I really like it. I'm, it went out of print really quickly, but it was made by, I believe, this was one of Hasbro's games, and if it's not Magic, they're out. Right. You know, even Wards of Waterdeep is no longer in print, uh, from what I understand. Really? So. Wow. What? Holy cow. It's like a massive seller. Well, not compared to Magic and, well, Magic. <laughs> magic, that's it, because even the Magic the Board games did not do so hot. They're gone, I guess. Anyway, fantastic, fun game. I haven't played it in a long time, though. Conquest it. of Narath. I'm going to go good. 
Number eight. Boink. My number eight, I imagine, is going to be on Mr. Basil's list further down. If not, his number one. Mm, you got called no out. No way. You just got called out. It's not my number one because I feel pretty confident you haven't played my number one. But go Ooh, ahead. Ooh, you want to do them like that? It will. I would. I would say it'll definitely. I would your say it, it. It'll be in his top three, and if it's not in his top three, he didn't think of it. Oh, well, now I'm worried. What? Yeah, that's right. Hero Escape. It's not even on my list. Oh my goodness! Not even. And I thought about it. I heresy. Okay, look. I thought about it for a really long time, and I realized I'd rather play one versus one every time. Every time, if we have four people. But if people, you only have four people. I don't think I would pick Hero Escape as the game to bring out. But it was my number 11, if that mm -hmm. makes you feel better. I'm thinking of a large... You started this crap! I'm thinking of a large, half-aquatic, half-land animal with the word crit after it. Can't you just say your words to make people do puzzles? Hypocrite! <laughs> Got it, got it. I'm like, huh? That was the longest. I'm like, turtle thing. crit? <laughs> oh, turtle crit. <laughs> okay, anyway, Heroescape. Look, this is a this is a game that I own. And I have set it up. My my kids, my 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 two older kids love this game and they asked me fairly recently to play this. And you were like, nah. And I was like, ah, oh, it takes so long to set up. So do it. But we did it. That's how the kids would do it. And we played it. And uh, one of my, my buddies, one of my son's friends came over, one of their buddies, that's why I said that. And we played a four player version of it. Two no, it, on two, it, it and plays it, fine at four. It was really, really fun. The thing that keeps me from it is the setup and the takedown. That's yeah. the thing that keeps me from playing this game more often. It's a really fun game and it's really great with two on two. But the setup and takedown just takes so long. As a matter of fact, with that game, we left it set up for, I think, three days <laughs> after that because we just didn't they, want to take they it down. Ate dinner on it. All right. <laughs> no, we Past weren't. The volcano. We actually <laughs> weren't eating. We weren't using the dining room table because of that. Uh, so I want to eat. But it's really good Finish Hero Escape. With, with four players, two on two. I enjoyed it a lot. Hero Escape, my number eight. Oh, man, you're right. I, yeah. It's oh, now great. we have a lot of Kraken Crit, Beaver Crit, Hippo Crit, Duck Crit, Frog Crit, Mud Skip Crit. Uh, thanks, Sam. <laughs> All right, my number eight is a small card game that was reprinted by WizKids, I believe, called Team Play. I think I think Z just went with the and name. This is just it's like a partners, gonna... partners, Teams. Team Play. Teams. Look it up. Team. And if the game came up when I Googled, I'm like, yeah, you're in the Done. list. Done. Is oh, it Partners. Is oh, it, you look at that game. I've never it heard of it. Is it fairly out of print? This is one I didn't even Got think it. about. Is anybody going to challenge me on this? No, no it's in the list. No, because nobody's played it before. No, this is definitely... <laughs> this is in the category for sure. Have you yeah, played the new getting, version, or you played only the old? I one? played the old one at uh, the Gathering a few years ago, and it was like the hot game of the Gathering. Oh, is this the one where you have to? It's really light, like you really, very, very light. light. You have to kind of try to sync with your partner. And yeah, because you're as, passing cards, I think, back and forth. You're trying to get them a run or get yourself a run or something like well, that? Well, there are goals. You're trying yes. to get the goal. Yes. But you have to help each other with the cards you're giving each other. I don't like this game. That's because you don't communicate with others very well. I communicate well. What? I just use an RPG. What? The good thing about this you game... Just, you just used a cryptic code to say hypocrite. And it was funny. It was funny. I thought it was funny. And it started, a, it went viral. <laughs> Not going viral. I don't think you understand <laughs> what viral means. Went viral. It's, it's, the good thing about this game is you can leave Hero Escape set it's up okay. and just play around it. <laughs> That's the best thing I can say about team play. Okay. No, I like it. It's, it's all right. It's definitely not my favorite on the list. I don't even own a copy, but it's a neat concept. If you are looking for a small time filler that plays 2v2, mm, works. I got better choices coming, but this is not a bad one. All right. All my choices are good, just saying. All yeah, right. well. My number eight is one of the weirdest ones on this list um, because you don't even know which of the players at the table is your partner, and no, that's, that's incognito. Not 2v2. Yeah, it is. No. It's 100% 2v2. How is it not? You don't know who's working with you. But someone is working with you. The game is definitely two players against two other players. Okay. 
looks like a lot of games could be 2v2. Well, give me another example. Shadow Hunters. Only if you're playing with four players, exactly. Yeah, Shut up. Four players. So, werewolf. And I would never call that. When you get two. down to two villagers <laughs> and two werewolves. Actually, the game's over at that point. One werewolf. So, never mind. <laughs> but one of them wants to lose? Okay, it doesn't matter. This is definitely proper. End of discussion. <laughs> All right. No, we're done talking about it then. I apologize. No. So, Incognito, you are going across a map of Venice, and you are trying to accomplish a mission with your partner. You just got to slowly figure out clues to figure out who your partner is at the table. Then once you do figure that out, then you both accomplish the goal, and then you, what if you, don't you say the deal out? is done or some weird cryptic what phrase. What if you don't figure it out? The deal is done. Then you're lose. probably going to lose to the other team. You can give secret signals, like, over the course of the game to show who you are, like, touch picking your, your nose, nose, picking your nose, pulling your ear. You can give fake clues, too. No, it's not like that. No? But, but essentially, you will figure out... <laughs> Very subtle hints. <laughs> I know, I avoided all games. Maybe it was just me. Clearly, it was just me. I avoided all games in which the partnership was not apparent from the beginning but of the game. But this is the only one I could think of where it's a two against two partnership game could, only. A lot of this those is games a four I player can game. make 2v2, though. I get it, but this one is specifically made that way. Okay. Also, there's a card game version of this which should be burned. Never played it. It's like a two out of ten. I hate it. Ooh. But this, this one also has a really cool. This also has a marble shaking weird device. Yeah, maybe the nun, the people. freaky nun. Yeah. It's a very disturbing plastic piece. I don't think it's a nun though. Okay. That's not. No, it's it's a, wearing a ma one of those masks. Yes. All right. People call it that. My number eight, incognito. Number seven. Okay, my number seven is a game that is actually made for 2v2 play. Um, but you definitely know who your partners are at the very beginning of the game. So it actually feels like a 2v2 game the entire time. Is this shade? This no. is a lot of I mean, you darkness. Being thrown your way. Uh, uh, is the game called Darkness? That'd be no, great. It's That's called, what I thought it was, actually. <laughs> That's what it's I thought it was, too. Goths Save the Queen. And it's a 2v2 game. Basically, uh, you have two different goth groups, the Visigoths and the Ostrogoths, I believe is what they're called. I could be wrong that with the Ostrogoths right. part, sounds but I think right. that's right. Anyway, I never play, so I don't know. You're trying to rescue your queen. queen from the other person, and you're doing so you can have her. by traversing over these different land tiles. And, and different things are going to be happening. Each person in the game has a certain rule. First of all, you can't communicate with your partner in any way. Not before the game starts, not during the game. You have to silently play what you think is the best thing for you to do. Go ahead. What? Nothing. No, stop, man. It's <laughs> creepy. Stop it, Just man. You make me feel weird. HR! Anyway. Hang on. Yes? <laughs> yes, exactly. This is Where'd a, Tom go? This is a great... This is the perfect game for this kind of situation because it's tailor-made for this. They have variants where you have to buy another version of the game if you want to play with more people. Mm -hmm. Don't do that. Uh, oh, it's I four put, players. I'm putting out my top ten list of irritating things is when the game okay. comes and says, it says on the box like two to ten, but it's only five. You're like, wait. Oh, you got to buy another copy? Another copy, right, yeah. No, Someone's don't do that. lying. Put a this two is the, this dash is a and put the ten Perfect the lightweight filler. When if, like, for example, if you are at a game night and you have four people that just finished a game and you're waiting for somebody else to stop there so you can break up on the two bigger games, this is a perfect game for that. Short. Because it's short and it plays four people specifically. So uh, I'd, I'd really go ahead and give it a look. Goths Save the Queen, my number seven. I'm All right. I'm glad I didn't pick your well, My number seven is uh, on the list. It's a stretch. <laughs> My number seven is going to be a little stretchy. I'm <laughs> busting out the stretchy pants. Here we go. All right, let's say same scenario. <laughs> My stretchy pants. Wait, you just got my kids out of incognito. No, no, hold on. I'm going to give you garbage about what you're saying. Uh, hold on now. This is what's happening. Okay, same scenario. you got four people that are waiting around. They want to play something quick, something light. And also, uh, there's another guy... Who's just hanging out on the side? Wait, he doesn't want to play. This is two v three. No, this is actually two v two. But you need a fifth person <laughs> who's not playing. What? You call game's mom called, in the kitchen? Game's called Mr. Lister's Quiz Shootout, and you can play two players 
versus two players, but somebody needs to be there to read the rules, like to read the, the questions. Oh, well, it could Did be an you? app. Did you have like another uh, filter? There isn't one ex that exists. You know what I mean? So yeah, you could if it was an app that would work. Did you have like a, another filter that like said the number of ratings that this game had on the geek is like zero to five? Because no, you've never heard of it. Ain't nobody played this game. It's hey, big potato. This game man. has holes in the box that go yeah, all the way through does. the box. They're awesome. I have I have a copy. It's great. That's actually pretty cool. I also have a copy. Because I steal questions from our game show. Yeah, but that's not the point. It's amazing. <laughs> it's a good game. And again, two versus two is a good way to play. But yes, you need a fifth person who will run the game. That is still <laughs> somehow mm -mm. a two versus two game that needs five people. No, Mine brown, son. <laughs> You're not I really wrong. Like it. I'm not wrong. But you are. No. <laughs> Somehow I am and I'm not. It's definitely a five player Schrodinger's game. number seven. <laughs> it's like that new game that just came out that's zero to two players. It's like, come on. <laughs> what is that? Zero no, to two players. A game on the game plays like itself? Zero. I guess when you open a box, it stops. I never. I need to check this out. Anyway, this is a trivia game. That's really all you need to know. It's a good trivia game, though. It's fun. Um, and you're picking things out of categories and seeing if you can, you know, top seven ways that an egg can be cooked. You're trying to guess and get more than the other team. I like it. It's silly. Uh, number seven, Mr. Lister's Quiz Shootout. My number seven was almost a crossover with Sam because it was it originally was going to be code names. Mm -hmm. But as much as I like code names and it could easily make this list, I decided to replace it with Decrypto, mm -hmm. which I think is a very good 2v2. Um, it says three to eight on the box, but it's it, it again. It's that whole giving clues to the other person back and forth, where you're trying to give cryptic clues to your teammate that aren't so cryptic that they can't figure out what's going on. Yes. But cryptic enough that the other team also can't figure it out. And I've seen it go really poorly, where someone just gave clues, and I was like, "Thanks, you're the worst partner ever." Um, well, it wasn't you guys. Hashtag savage. But it's you know who mean. you are. It's still super mean. Well, I didn't say that to their face. I am you now, but they did. don't know. Just kinda one did. of my partners has been bad. Anyway. Somebody out there is weeping right now. <laughs> yes. Uh, and then people, you can give really obvious clues, and then the other team will get it. I, again, you could, this is very similar to earlier when we were talking about Time's Up. You can play this with bigger teams, but I really <laughs> like it at the two against two. It just works really well in that regard. I like it a lot, too, but... I really thought this one would be on your list. Uh, same, same, for me, same complaint as uh, uh, Codename... Codenames Pictures, I prefer three versus three. Mm. I'd oh. rather have... Well, that's our next top ten. The, great, then there's two easy <laughs> no, picks for me. That would be a pretty... <laughs> <laughs> Wait, no. Stop I can it. stop. Stop it. Can we make something easy? <laughs> four versus four, you're like uh, Captain Soda or what else? I got nothing. Uh, top right. <laughs> one game, yeah. <laughs> All right, good pick. Number six. Rounding out the top half of my list. Now, about really a year and a half ago, maybe just a year ago, I, like Tom said earlier, I would not have included an Axis and Allies game on this list. But it works. Axis and Allies and Zombies, however, changes that for me. Yeah, I really do enjoy it. this a lot better than just regular Axis and Allies, and you can play 2v2. Now, the thing with this one is, is if it's definitely not a filler like Goth Saves the Queen. Um, You're good. I don't think was, <laughs> I don't think is, was thinking that. No, nobody was thinking that. This is like a commitment. This is a time commitment that you're going to have to invest in in order to play this game. But it does work well with 2v2. Uh, and the zombies part of it that added that gets added into Axis and Allies really makes this game fun. It, it breathes new life into the game for me because it gives you um, like uh, special technologies that you can that you can use. You're you're battling against the, the zombies as another faction that's kind of AI, uh, but you can also use them uh, to. Uh, battle hey, against they were your once other people. Humans using you can, them. you can, you can put them literally on a barge and sail them into your opponent's territory, and now they have to deal with them. You don't, if you have that technology. 
It's really fun. I really enjoy this. Again, this is one of the I'm saddened by your coolest things. Callous treatment of the undead. <laughs> Flippant, if I may. Flippant. I, I really enjoy this. I really enjoy this game for Axis and Allies, and it works well with 2v2, so it's on my list. My number six, Axis and Allies yes. and Zombies. Someone here wants to know how a zombie game can breathe new life. Well, I shook my head at that point. It's a figure of speech, boy. Get over it. That's great. Go ahead. I kind of wish my uh, next pick was Wits and Wages, so I could say Wits and Wages and Zombies. <laughs> <laughs> but it's not. Uh, it's not on my list. It's one that did not quite make it for me. Um, my next pick actually is Ticket to Ride Team Asia. I, I, I seriously, he just put the word team in the search engine. You never played this? Yes, I played it. Then shut your face up. <laughs> <laughs> What if I hadn't played it? But I, can I, I still would have said the same thing. I hate to <laughs> let you peek behind the curtain, but you know, it's like those RPGs that where this, no matter which choice you make, that the the NPC says the same thing back. That's yeah. what you get with me. Shut your face up. <laughs> anyway, this one is uh, it's a an expansion map pack. Comes with two maps. One of them is called Legendary Asia. That's just a basically a, a standard ticket to ride playing uh, or or style map with a couple of twists and then on the other side you get this team Asian which you are going to be sharing resources and some cards with a team uh, teammate. It's interesting, it's different, it's a little twist on the formula and it's not something I would do every time I'm playing Ticket to Ride obviously but as a way to change it up a little bit this is a neat idea. One that they really haven't touched upon. That's true. Anymore. They haven't moved it to any of the other maps. Yeah, I mean, some of the all the other maps have done Ticket to Ride 20th anniversary. Oh, snap. <laughs> the the trains keep getting more and more translucent. <laughs> In the 20th anniversary <laughs> there are no trains. No, there's just white trains. Everybody, they're all just, everything's clear. They're all completely The whole game's memory. You have to remember where you put your trains. And then, and with a teammate, that's the thing. So they <laughs> haven't, the they haven't made any other team maps at all. Not, ever? no. And this is only one of the two sides. Yeah. I wonder if that says something. No, you can't go down that route because of Marklin and everything else. How many uh, axes and allies and zombies have they made? <laughs> one. <laughs> they broke the mold. Yeah. Bless their heart. <laughs> anyway, take it to the ride, Team Asia. It's my number six pick. What do you got? My number six is the newest game on my list. I just reviewed it. Tomorrow comes out. <laughs> oh, whoa! Oh, oh. How did that happen? Is that a DeLorean parked out front? Comes out in 2021, <laughs> and he's going to review it next month. No, no, I just saying it took me a while. It actually Cult came out of the Acid. Future. It, you know, it came out of PAX. Anyway, it's Catacombs Conquest. Right, Catacombs Conquest, yes. Okay. So you've played Catacombs before, at least you've seen it play, where there's the flicking of discs, a Dungeon Master versus another one. Then they made Catacombs and castles, which was a team versus team thing. This is a one against one or two against two. There's two characters, so if you play one person, you control both of them. So you might as well just play like two people. Rolling balls at each other? No, that's, that's a, not a great graphic. Yeah. That's from their Kickstarter. Does it also mean discs you're flicking? I'm yes. guessing. All right, so you have this. You have a disc that you're flicking, and it, it just definitely looks like spears. It's a generic bad guy or good guy, depending what team you're on. But you have a deck of cards, and you draw a handful, and then you play a card, and it shows you the sequence of shots that you'll shoot that turn. Okay. So like this turn, shoot a fireball, then move. Okay. So I play that one, or um, I could you know, do any of these different sequences and you're trying to make the opponent's shared health, they have a shared health thing, go down to zero. That's all. So the game is play a card, do the sequence, and then you can flick one of the the barriers in the middle for some reason. You can just move one each turn. Okay. And it's a really fast game, but I like it because I don't have to sit there and go, what does that character do? What does that one do? You know, it does whatever the card says in my hand. Is it scenario driven? No, it's just straight up flick, 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 flick. I should probably say it slower. Flick, 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 flick. That's too late now, baby. It's out there. <laughs> the internet's about mm -hmm. to tear you up. Yep. So it's like a, so it's like a small flick, flick them up. How? How? It feels is it, like it might be that. Sure, but huh? How is it varied? How, how does it vary? I mean, what, no, because what makes... you, the, you have the whole deck of cards. The order I play them in. This turn I'm going to move and shoot a range shot. This turn I'm shooting a fireball. This turn I'm going to just make four move attacks. Okay. So it's kind of like the whole other game condensed. It's a very light game, but I like it because okay. I like that whole 
Sometimes I just don't want to have to remember all these different things. I just play the card. It's varied by the whatever cards you play that turn. It's like a sports game almost. What's going to make one game feel different than another, though? The, the order of the, the the shuffling of the deck is not going to be the same. It's not the same order. Yeah, I guess. Really? You put Goth Save the Queen on here. That, this is better than that. And I haven't even played God Save the Queen, so that's a totally oh. unmerited diss. Yes, unmerited. It's <laughs> right. Unmerited exactly. diss coming your way. No, I just, it just sounds like every game would, would feel like the same thing. That's all I'm Well, saying. I guess in a sense. I mean, the, the game, if there was no cards and it was just flicking like Crokinole, all those games are the same. No, um. I, I get that, and I don't play Crokinole because of that. But... <clears throat> Uh, what I'm saying is, like, why, why don't they have scenarios where one team is trying to do the next? <laughs> what are you doing? Weirdo. Well, I, I just think that situation would be ripe for a scenario-driven <laughs> thing. He's committing to the joke. I get yes, it, he but it's a small, the box is like this small. So it's just a Got small it. little game. Okay, I really okay, like okay. it. Did you, are you done? Okay. Let's go. Number five. Reference board game breakfast earlier today about acting. You've already done it like six times. I know. My number five is a game that just came out. Second Wave is about to hit all of its backers, and it is Time of Legends Joan of Arc. Now, the reason this is number five and not higher on my list is because you guys some should get of used to seeing this on Sam's top ten no, 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 for no, no, the no, next no, no. twenty years. Some of the scenarios don't have the possibility so. of being two v two. Some of the scenarios are specifically two v two. So the entire game is not a two v two game, but there are scenarios in it that are two v two, which is why it's lower on my list. But I really enjoy the game a lot, which is why it's a five, right there in the middle. So uh, I really enjoy this. Um, each player is going to have their own army of characters and, and uh, soldiers and what have you. And they're going to have uh, different things that they're wanting to accomplish during this scenario. Uh, they are working together, but selfishly so, because you want to try to accomplish what you're supposed to be accomplishing. But if you can't, then you're going to be helping your partner. Uh, do accomplish his part of the scenario so that your side wins. Um, so it's it's kind of strange that way, I guess, but I really do enjoy it, and I enjoy the game a lot. Time of Legends, Joan of Arc. It works, eh, but only certain scenarios. My number five. All right. Well, let's keep it thematic. Uh, my number five pick is Crokinole. And in this one... You have an army. <laughs> He's trolling. <laughs> troll, 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 troll. Well, there's a picture there. Oh, my goodness. <laughs> Picks don't lie. Yeah, it's Crokinole. Um, what can I say that hasn't already been said about the stupidity of my choice? <laughs> Let me ask you this. Is there a deck of cards in this game? No. But yeah, well. It's just flicking. Flick, 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 flick. <laughs> okay, you know, I actually thought about putting this on my list, and then I realized I don't think I've ever played it two against two. Oh, really? I've only ever played two against two. You've only played 1v1? Yes, that's how most people play it. Oh, uh, no, I've only ever played two no, versus two, yeah. Teams. You got two people, uh, you know, you're doing, I mean, like, yeah. When there's tournaments and such, the... The winner of the tournament is a single person. Yeah, usually. okay, you're right. I don't know. I've only ever played like that, and I like that because you can help each other out when. This is fine. I, I know it's, it's like, possible. Okay, I'm just saying you know, I never played. You it. across the table, you got to help me knock this out of the way so I can get in there. Stuff like that. I think this is a great choice. I like it. Uh, it's. He said. It's a parlor. It's a parlor no. game. It's a very different kind of experience. Getting a board is expensive. I it's want one of them boards that looks like a clock, too. No, the clock yeah. is just a... I know it's mounted on. I yeah, know. yeah, right. I would love to have a Crokinole board. Actually, I, that's I, would, one. I wouldn't necessarily, because I have nowhere to put it. These things are so large, you got to store them somewhere. But you, you can hang you them. Put I a know. clock on it and put it on your wall. Yeah, I don't want to do that. What um, do you do with the clock when you're playing after it? After you drive... A stake into the wall. You make so your, it can one hold of the, the kids board. hold it. Oh, next to the game mean. board. Whoever's losing the game has to oh, hold it. Oh, that ain't right. All right. Anyway, Crokinole. I do dig it. My number five pick. 
My next two picks are similar in, in one regard. They, there's one thing I don't like, and Sam disagrees with me on that sometimes. Is I'm not a big fan of a game that is clearly one player against one player, and then at the end of the rules are like, for a three to four player game, just split the two halves of the game. I don't disagree with you on this. Oh, you don't? I hate games that do this. Yeah, it really drives me nuts, because then on the outside of the box, they put two to four players, yeah. and when you open it up, you're like, oh, yeah, it's a two player game. Mm -hmm. But occasionally, sometimes I think they work really well with the 2v2 part, hmm. and this is one of them, and that's Star Wars Queen's Gambit. That one, I think, works really well in this regard because one person's controlling the battlefield on Naboo and the other person's controlling the Queen's Palace. And, and uh, I think the, the person with Naboo also controls the spaceship. I don't remember how it's split up exactly, but you, the game actually comes with decks that are split. If you're playing one against one, you just control both decks. Um, and I really like it. Uh, it works really well. It's back and forth. It's certainly light. It's not this heavy, complex game. And I also enjoy playing it just with, as one against one. But with two against two, it worked pretty well. Mm. In fact, I'm pretty sure you and I have played in games of this that are two against two. Yeah. Way back in yesteryear when you could buy this game in stores. Yes. When I didn't have any gray hair. That's even a wilder story. I don't even remember such a moment. All Is right, there so any flicking I, in this I game? Do. Star Wars Queen's Gambit. Number four. All right, my number four is a game that has those qualifications of... 2v2. It's probably... That's good. <laughs> no, it's probably 1v1, but you can play two versus two. That's Last Night on Earth. Now, this is a game I haven't talked about in a long time because no largely kidding. it hasn't really that uh, cover. hit I love it. of those things. But... Um, you can play 2v2. As a matter of fact, when you have two players of the zombies, you actually control the different shades of zombies. One is a tannish color and the other one is brown. Uh, and you, one person controls They're that color and so inside. forth. I don't care They're all gooey on the. Ooh, Ew, that's man, disgusting. What's wrong with you? But, uh, and we then the other two people split the up the same. heroes or survivors between them, and uh, it, it's a uh, team versus team 2v2. So it works well, uh, and it's, it's made to work well uh, in that way, but again, it really feels like a two player game that you can split stuff up. Um, there's another one of those kinds of games on my list. Or like a multiple players versus one, right? Really. Isn't that how this works? No, no, not this one. No, Last Night on Earth is really pretty much 1v1. You can One person controls all the survivors and one person controls all I the zombies. I thought the survivors were meant to be divvied up. They if you, can if be. You could. They can be. Oh, sure, yeah, you can do so that. It's really too. one versus all, but the one could be split into two. Right? And you can only have two survivors. Yeah. Ever. That's the no, max. No, 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 no. Yeah, yeah, you can have two players against two players. I mean, I, it's a good pick. If it I works. could have split the others, it's a one versus all. <laughs> if the one could have been split, it would have been on this list. I've seen some of those, and I think they can be split. <laughs> yes. That's my number four. Last night on Earth. You're playing a game of one game. versus all, and halfway through, you split. Take the miniature and, you, and actually you, split it. Then you pull a little whistle, and you're, you're like, play that. You blow the whistle, a little guy runs up. He's not with me. Everyone else is like, what? That is a surprise. Legacy game with people. And at the end, you kill that guy. <laughs> you rip his card, so to speak. <laughs> Too much? Let's get back to the list. Come back! Here we go. My number four pick is Domino's. Good old classic Latin America style of playing Domino's. A lot of people out there have played with yeah, Domino's. Um, I see a little bit of the bottom of the barrel on that. Went from you no, I like this pick. This is actually pretty up. high. If it was scraping the barrel, it would have been one of the top ones. Wait, what? <clears throat> what? Is there a version of this? Like you feel? Yeah, you feel the troll happening too, don't no. you? No, like, you feel it too. No, no, no. Like, is it like Mexican train dominoes? Mexican or? train dominoes is absolute garbage. Chicken okay. foot. Chicken uh, foot. So just like straight up. I don't know what chicken foot is, but it sounds bad too. So what is the version? So this is, I don't know what it's called. It's just Latin America dominoes. Uh, a lot of countries play with double sixes. Uh, uh, Cubans play with double nines normally, which is what you see there. So the tokens go up to nine nines, right? And you have partners. You are shuffling the dominoes. You're drawing a number of them, and you are playing. It feels like a card game in some ways. You are playing these pieces out to the table until someone runs out of pieces, ideally. Mm -hmm. Somebody and then you're said scoring. I forgot Z did some time in prison. 
this is definitely a cultural thing. No, it is. That it you'll is. find in many no, I, countries all dude, over. I, no, it's. Yeah, I, I grew up playing dominoes. Don't get me wrong. I love I love playing dominoes. You I probably played something. Wouldn't expect different. it on a list. I don't know what you played actually. I grew up playing huh? triangles. What kind of game was it? I don't know. We we used. Uh, I think we probably used a double twelve set, and we played chicken foot. Chicken foot is where you can. Um, you can split it, you, right? You can, it can you, go you can split it and you have oh, other people have okay. to play on top of it and there's three different avenues and now you have three more things Got it. that you can do on yours. I don't remember all the ins and outs of it. I haven't played that. It's I don't been know a while. That it's yeah. my favorite way to play domino. But yeah, anyway, it's just a my favorite game. way to play domino is just yeah. Anyway, it's a good game. Again, it's like saying mahjong that gets played a lot in that culture. Dominoes gets played a lot. And it's, I think it's a very good partnership game. Really, that's that's how you play. Two versus two. Um, playing multiple hands, if you would, until mm -hmm. one oh, team has a score high enough that they win, and that's the game. You play to whatever total you want. Uh, I really like it. I haven't played in a while, but it's, uh, it's something I grew up playing, and it's a culturally ingrained thing, so I do like this. This is not a cheeky pick. I do like dominoes about where it lands on the list. So really, yeah, yeah. I mean, again, it's a two v two list. If yeah, I was making yeah, like yeah, top one hundred games of all time, Z don't like teammates. You know, uh, it's it's a hard list to put together. Is what I mean. But I get that. Among these, get the dominoes is not like a. Oh, I'll put it in there to be funny. It's about where it would land. I like it. All right. So back to good games. My number four. It's all right. <laughs> Culturally insensitive. Okay. HR! Sir, go away. Okay. Anyhow, my number four is very similar. Like I said, it's a game that I think is one. Actually, this one is the rules are written for two against two, if I remember correctly. Yep. And that's 1775 Rebellion. Now, you can play this one against one, but it really works well. As in, in fact, I could have made the whole list of these games, and I thought that'd be kind of Well, I almost nonsense. put one of them on the list, but it's two versus three. Uh, that's true. Eighteen twelve is two versus three, but you could play two against that's the two. That's only one I've played. But this one, there are most of his games have two armies against two other armies usually, and the, and that's actually part of the strategy of the game because sometimes you want to move some an army and they don't have the the right color. The army's not there. Mm -hmm. 1775 is my favorite of the grouping, although the Vikings one came really close, but we'll hear about that later. Um, uh, I didn't even think about this group. Oh, you didn't? You are a filthy liar. I really thought 878 was on your list. Are you list. joking? Are you believing the trollness right now? <laughs> oh, Who yeah. is this on his list? <laughs> How long have I worked with these two and I'm still suckered? Uh, All right, anyway. Uh, 17, I'm with you. 1775, <laughs> Area Control. It is a fantastic game, as are most of the Academy games. And it, it's one of the few games, I think, especially with this, where it doesn't feel like, oh, I get to control the six horses while you control everything else. This one feels a lot more balanced. Horses? It's, well, whatever I'm saying. In some of these games, it's with well, some of these games where they split it up. They're like, "Here's That's your so army. I'll control this." And you're like, "Oh, I'm glad I can help." Mm -hmm. So that's, that's my number do. four. Number three. <laughs> My number three is a game that actually has a second edition coming out next year, I believe. Um, it's so by that narrows it down to like half the games in existence. True. Uh, but uh, wow. this one is from a, a uh, company called Wolf Designer. Here it's called go. Guards of Atlantis. Mm, yes, and uh, yes. this is a MOBA style game where you are going to be controlling a certain hero and you're trying to use these different minions on the board to uh, make it difficult for your team uh, your, your opposing team, rather, to get to your spawn point. Uh, and you're trying to get to the other person's spawn point and so forth and so on. And it is very fun 2v2. Uh, it can actually go, I think it's go up to eight, uh, mm -hmm. six or eight, uh, but it's really fun. And the length of time is constrained enough with 2v2 that it's really a fun game. I think that's really what it sh how it should be played. You know, it, the sweet spot is four. But you can go up to six or eight, I believe. Um, really one fun game. One versus one also? Or? Yeah, you can do one v one as well. Okay. So uh, it's very fun. I enjoy it a lot. Um, I'm, I'm very glad to see that they're coming out with a second edition. That means that I think that there's enough 
um, interest, popularity, interest. I guess you yeah. could say that it, that it warrants a second edition. Um, and I'm interested to see what they've what, what what changes they've they've made. So that's my number three, Guards of Atlantis. Cool. I'm assuming they're kickstarting that. I at believe some point. so. They usually kickstart their stuff. Yeah. yeah. All right, my number three is uh, I talked earlier about, where are you, uh, team play. Talked about that earlier, and I said that I had a, a little card game like that coming later that I liked better. This is it. It's called Sky Tango uh, from Z-Man put this out. It was a reprint of a game called Sun and Moon originally, and they reprinted a Sky Tango, and I say that because oh. this picture here shows the original. I played Sun and Moon. This, Sun is, this is the original uh uh, French printing, I guess. Oh, I don't remember dirty. this being two against two. Yeah, actually, that's a great way to play. You can not play that way, but 2v2 is... This is a, a uh, an example of a game I would rather play 2v2 than, than the okay. free-for-all way. You can play... It's been a while. You can play on your on your own or on your partner's I'm pretty sure, or maybe only you can play Sun. If you start Sun, they can only play Moon cards. Something like that. I forget. It's been a while. It's the way to play, though. I really enjoy it. And if you cannot play on your turn, every round you have to play a card. If you cannot play, you have to clean up the cards and start again. You're hoping to make a run long enough that you can score them. It's a very light game. Interesting artwork. Bizarre. I had a couple of issues with it in that there are these... There's animal symbols on the card that mean play a card. If there's an animal, play again. They're not always distinct. I wish they would have just put a symbol on the corner. I want it when you play it, it makes an animal sound. That'd be great, but you have to wait for a Tubudu or whatever that is. <laughs> That's true. That. <laughs> I don't think they're using Tubudu on card games. Our first mm, game. <laughs> okay. It's for kids. <laughs> All right. No sound? Okay, I guess I'm done. You know, that's coming. You just wait. Sound making cards? For sure. We should do our top 10 stupid predictions fun, someday. Fun, fun, fun That's like any price. top 10, pretty much, <laughs> let's be honest. Thanks. Anyway, Sky Tango, my number three ah. pick. So the general rule with Euro games is if it says to five players, play with four. If it says to six players, play with four. If, if it, it says two to three players, play with <laughs> Don't buy it. Yeah, it's a god. Anyhow, if it says <laughs> if there's an expansion that comes out for that adds more players, don't you buy say it. no. <laughs> Good example of this, Catan. All right. But anyhow, um, this expansion for a game added more players, but then put them in teams, which makes it work well. But I still like it with only four, and that is Concordia uh, Venus. So in this one, you can play Concordia in teams. Really? Yeah. So you can play actually up to six players with three teams. I don't recommend that. I like it with the two teams of two. That's the best way. So the way it works is they, they change a few of the cards in the game. And when it's your turn and you play a card, you and your teammate both do the action. Okay. You do it first, then they do it. You also can take some money from each other. I don't think you can take resources, just money. You can use each other's money. And there's also a card that says, so you're not, you're not supposed to. I have a, someone in my game group who does anyway. You're not supposed to tell your teammate what card to play or hint towards it. But there is a card in there that you can play that says, look at your opponent's hand, pick one of those cards, play it. For and then, them. For them, essentially. Okay. So, But it works well. It, it, I, was, I was not expecting much. And it even works well with the six players. It works okay. But because of the team variation, I like it better than four single people in a sense. Really? Because you add your two scores together at the end. That's pretty simple. You know, highest score wins. But I go, and if, if me and Sam are partners, I go and Sam goes on my turn. And then, you know, Suzanne goes and you go, and then you're both going. And then Sam's going again. He's going every other turn, yeah, essentially. Yeah, yeah, right. That works well. I that's, like it. I like that. Okay, that's pretty cool. Um, and it, and it lets you, hey, I'm working on this area, or you can do some cool combos, like I'm going to turn over this, this tile and take the resources, and then you take all that money. Okay, I got you. And that works this well. This is a good game. I mean, I do like Concordia. I uh, never played this expansion. That sounds neat. You can actually even buy this one separately by itself, Concordia Venus as a as whole game. As the core and the, yeah. yeah. And then you can also get Salsa. Yeah, but that's not what we're talking about. So, on to number two. Number two. 
All right, my number two is um, a wee bit of a shoehorn. Because, so scratch your um, pants, shoehorn. shoehorn. Yes. Correct. <laughs> Oh, what will be the judges uh, of that? I, I really believe and I prefer to play this game two player only. But if following the parameters of the list, you have four people and you're, you've got to play a game that has four people or that can support four people, this is a game that you will enjoy. That is Star Wars Rebellion. I shoehorn is correct. Is. I'm gonna bring one in the top ten and just That's throw right. it on the table. <laughs> you seem like the kind of man who would own a shoehorn. Again, I do. <laughs> this this Why list that? is hard to make. I don't, well, that's true. This list is hard to make. This is also number this, two. This is right. You could put this as ten. I like the no. I you're gonna say I like Codenames Pictures better than Star Wars Rebellion? No, I'm not gonna say that. I just, would play Star Wars Rebellion over Codenames Pictures with four people any day of the week. Are you saying if someone likes Codenames more than Star Wars Rebellion, you kind of... No, 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 no. I'm talking about say, personally. Say, say, say. Personally. Okay. Personally. <laughs> again, right, personally. Right. Personally. No, let me say it one more time. Personally. In my if opinion. If I have Star Wars <laughs> Rebellion you... in front of me and uh, Codenames Pictures in front of me, and I think the people that I'm going to be playing the game with will enjoy Star Wars Rebellion. I'm going to play Star Wars Rebellion, period. I will say, though, that of all the games mentioned so far, this is one that if you said you want to play it, I'd be like, oh, okay. And you're like, two against two? I would say, sorry, I'm out. I, I would refuse to play this two against well, two. That's, again, your personal decision. I would choose to play Star Wars Rebellion <laughs> over most of these games, given that time isn't a, isn't a concern, and I think the people will play it. Will we'll enjoy it. Well, I hope I'm so. I'm not going mean, to make people I wouldn't, play this. I wouldn't. Well, you should make people play it. Okay, again, <laughs> my ten through six, I will make you play. <laughs> my five through one, you can decide. <laughs> anyway, it does work with four players. I prefer two, but if I have four people. And they're all interested in playing Star Wars and this Rebellion. this is the only game I have. I'll play it out. And they love Star Wars. No, that's And not it's it. May the 4th. That's not it. I will play this. <laughs> <laughs> My number two is Star Wars Rebellion. All right, all right. You better be careful what you say. He might go write this down and then make that happen. <laughs> right. I know, yeah. All right, my number two Live is... Stream, May the 4th. It's a party game as well. It's a speedy game uh, called Tags. And this one, you've seen this, right? I, I just looked at your review. It. You reviewed this one year ago this week. No way. You did. This feels brand new to me still. Okay. That's crazy to me anyway. Hmm. Uh, I don't. I no longer care about it. Don't get me wrong. It is old. <laughs> I only care about games that are coming out at Essen 2020 or later. But I'll talk about this for now. That's this a is a party game. game. Hmm? It's a good looking game. Oh, it's it a, really is a cool great looking, looking game. game. Yeah, it's got these nice marbles, and you are taking, I think, 30 seconds. It's a timer. Actually, no, I think it's 15 seconds. You have a sand timer, you flip it, and you and your teammate have 15 seconds to say things <coughs> that fall in the categories that are across the top, starting with the letters that are across the side. If you make that match, down you remove that marble down the side, yeah. <coughs> so you take the marble, you know, so it might be food, starts with B, banana. Take that marble off, put it in your cup. Got it. Once the 15 seconds are up, you immediately flip over the sand timer, and the other team jumps right in. I think that sounds like fun, but I think I would be horrible at it. It's very stressful yeah. a little bit, but it's fun at first. <laughs> Thankfully, it's fun at first. <laughs> well, no, it's always fun, but at first, it's very, uh, you fire things off, and that feels yeah. good. Yeah. Oh, then like I get this, stressful. That, right. that. And then you remove those marbles, 15 seconds. Okay, go. And then while they're going, you're thinking, right? You're like, okay, yeah, I could that. Mm. Oh, they removed that. Okay, well, right. how about that? Uh, eventually, though, you'll have your 15 seconds, and you're thinking, I got nothing. But if you go through two of those turns back to back where nothing's taken, that round's over, you set up another one. Got it. Uh, the different marbles are worth different values. I really, this is a great, great party game. Uh, the only reason I don't play it more, honestly, is because it's obviously not language independent. And I like being able to play language independent games. I sometimes need to. But um, yeah, this is a really, I, I, a very high recommendation from me. If you see this game and you're looking for a party game that's got that classic um, 
It's like the not picturing you know, Scattergories feel to it. Right. This is the new Scattergories, in my opinion. So that's my number two pick. Got it. My number two is Tapestry. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, baby! Cult of the unreleased and unavailable. All right, my number two is our first crossover, actually. I think. Uh, Have we had none? Too late. It's with you. Too little, too late. And it is. Well, that like narrows it down because like seven of the games in your list I wouldn't uh, pick. Ticket to Ride. Yeah, Ticket to Ride. Ticket to Ride, the Asian uh, map here, the Team Asia, is really good. Although, I don't want to do it all the time because it stresses me out with whoever my partner is. Because you don't trust them. No, because you have that same handful of cards, and as I see them grabbing cards to put in there, and I'm like, that is not the color we need. But you can't really say it. Sure, right. And I want to smack them and tell them, you know. I, I meant like I wanted to gently point out. I need to talk to HR <laughs> real quick. HR left for the day. <laughs> Anyhow, no, but it just yeah. When you play this, you sit there and you're like, I don't ah, ah, and you just get this frustration. But it's a good frustration. <laughs> <laughs> Not that one. Bunch of absolutely. <laughs> My number two. Ticket to Ride, Team Asia. I really like it. Would you Crossover. be? No, I was actually, I had a question. <laughs> Don't high five me, okay? I have a question. <laughs> what a jerk. <laughs> <laughs> would you be willing to be my partner in this? Yeah, I would, because we think fairly similarly. Yeah, I'll high five you. Yay. What to the TV? Did the TV go out again? It's yeah. dead. And finally, number one. It's back! Magic! Wow, Wow. it did come back. Look at that. All right, here we go. What is this? I have no idea. High roll wins. High roll wins, but ties cancel out. Okay, Faduti, calm down. (laughs) Here we go. It's true. Here we go. Six! Oh, garbage! What is it? If you roll it off the table, it don't count. You got to re-roll it. A two? It doesn't count. Sam said it doesn't (laughs) count, count, mainly because it was a two. Also, this was a six, you cheater. Yeah, I know. I hit it on purpose. What is it? No, it doesn't count. Roll. I have to roll on, my own. Man, roll. Hey, I always check Come the on, number Cleo. first. Why haven't you rolled Come yours on, yet? I'm waiting, because that matters. Oh. So we cancel out, which means we don't have to do ours at all. I'm good. <laughs> now, Z will be first, then Sam, then me. <clears throat> oh, he messed up the schedule. I think I know Z's. I wrote it oh. down on my list, just really? in case. What about his? It, you better know it. No, I was actually going to pick Rebellion because I was already planning to yell him about it regardless. But, <laughs> I, but, I, <laughs> but it's I knew the other, one. It's the, the other one we're talking about. Yeah, okay, what do you I think, think so. it is? I think yours is a party game. Okay. Am I correct? Possibly. <laughs> like we I can neither confirm nor deny that is opinion. Is this party game currently in print? Probably not. Yep, I got it. Boom, do it. What do you think it is? What if we think, uh, what, if I, what if I guess six of Talk you? Talk about cryptic. Good night. That's right. Boom! My number one pick is a game called Compatibility. You want the box? Yes. And look at that blue blend into the blue. <laughs> How amazing. Those two colors are compatible, if you would. Uh, I like this. It's uh, You can play this two. It's always teams of two. Okay? But it is... Uh, you could technically play three teams of two. Two versus two, though, is fine. That's okay. And this is a nice couples game. I was going to say the same thing. Someone, someone comes over for dinner, a couple comes over for dinner. This is a great... It's a great choice for that because you are basically revealing a card, has a category, a word, something. And then every player has an identical deck of imagery cards. You're selecting a few of those based on the clue. Right. Ranking those from the strongest association, in your opinion, to the weakest among those four or five and then seeing if you match with your partner. That's it, that's the game. I've had tons of fun with this. Uh, I've had so much fun with this that I made a very nice comment, in my opinion, on Board Game Geek. Uh, can you go back to the other image, please? Uh, it was so nice, it in fact, on the box. that they went ahead and slapped it on the box in that really big font there on the side, and then they credited it <laughs> to <laughs> Board Game, Game Geek. Geek. <laughs> that's me right there, it makes you laugh, think, wonder, make tough decisions, and feel glad you have your friends and family all around you, sometimes all at once. Gotta love that. 
Well, this came Board out. BoardGameGeek.com. <laughs> <laughs> well, this came out in 2010. No one knew who you were then. I just think it's funny. That would have been a detriment. That's pretty neat. That my I actually spotted this at a game store somewhere. That is years really cool, ago. Though. Years ago, I saw it. I picked that up. I'm like, hey, look, compatibility. It's in print here. I already have my own. I was like, that seems familiar. <laughs> It read, and I was I felt familiar. So I pulled out my phone. I Maybe mean, I didn't have an iPhone. I must have, you know, looked it up. I was like, that's me. That's what I said <laughs> on Board Game Geek. It's very funny. Uh, Did you do, get my permission to use my quote? Yeah, well, Board Game Geek, I guess, dot com was enough. Uh, I do like it a lot. It's a fantastic party game. It's a beautiful game. It really is. So there you go. That's my number one pick. My number one is... Oh, yeah, you're right. We caught it already. A78 Vikings. That is correct. The invasion of England. I got a new rule. Um, no lying in this office. Did you think it was X Wing? Well, that's, yeah, that's if it hadn't been that. You probably considered X Wing. No, I didn't. You didn't? No. It's a better four player game than Rebellion. <sighs> 878 is a cool. <laughs> 878, however, is. Uh, this would be the first game that I pulled out again if I have it available to me and there's four players uh, and you know I guess there's some historical thing that needs to be there as well you have to enjoy historical games but if I'm in that group of people yes this one's going to be the one that comes off the shelf first because it, really any of the birth of series generally speaking uh, I think this one's a this little one. more complex than the other ones it's not a lot right? Well, there's a few more rules with how the leaders come on and stuff. The oh other ones are goodness. really straightforward. 1812 is really straightforward. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Calm down. I it's it's it. for I dumb a, people. I have what a I really think. hard time <laughs> figuring that game out. I really no, I time. really enjoy this one. It works very well. Um, both the sides are, are fairly evenly matched. Now, don't get me wrong. Uh, Vikings do have their work cut out for them, especially against two savvy players that are the English players. Um, but it makes for a but really great experience. But Sam will always play the Vikings. I usually do, yeah. Of course. I usually do. We got a game with Vikings, you're not going to play the Vikings? Well, two people have to play the English. I got like a game called Viking, Other people. Viking yeah, Hunters, where everyone in the game is a hunter of Vikings. Sam will give it a one. <laughs> no. Zero. <laughs> <laughs> that was awesome. Uh, that's my number one, though. A78 Vikings. It is a great 2v2 game, and it uh, is a. They're, they're, uh, Academy Games just knocks it out of the park with their historical yeah, games. Yeah. So it's great. What do you got? My number one came out last year, so it's old, as we say. What is, is Tom's pick here? Say. I have no idea what his pick is. You haven't is. played this one, but I no feel idea. pretty confident you would like it, actually. I know it How do you know I haven't played Escape, but you know. Because it wasn't on your list. Yeah. All right. Now this this could, this could also easily be played one against one. It's an abstract strategy game from AEG called War Chest. I haven't played it. Yeah, War Chest, which has some of the nicest components for a game you will find. Po these great poker chips, and it's a mix, almost of a bit of a bag builder and an abstract strategy game. You're putting these chips on the board. You get three units. There's a lot of different units in the game. You get three that move a very specific way, and your opponent gets three other ones. If you're playing with Two against two, you each have two units. Okay. And so you have these four different units, and you're trying to capture different areas in the board, capturing the other person in the process. But the, you're also buying more chips of these characters thrown in the bag. When you pull it out, you'll be able to move that person. But the more chips you put on the board of that character, so let's say knight, we'll call one a knight. If I have four knight chips, but I put three out on the board, mm, and there's only one knight. in the bag, mm -hmm. Whenever I pull that out, I can move one of those three. I'm, I'm able to move them less often, but I have more on the board. Sure. If okay. I have one on the board but three in the bag, I can move it more often, but okay, there's only you. one. It's a really cool concept, and they all have different movement, but they all feel very balanced, too. Okay. And so you get a different combo each match. That coupled, again, with just how amazing the production is, it's really, really cool. I've heard a lot of good things about this game. I've just Every time I see it, I am not inspired to play it. I just don't like the look of it. I really like the look of it, actually. Maybe not the cover so much, but the, when you open that box, you're just like, what? Really? So. All right, cool. I have heard a lot of good things about it. I did not realize it was a 2v2. Oh, you're game. right. It's, it's two players get three units each, sorry. And then in a one versus one, they have four, four different units. Sorry. So it's six on one side and six on the other if you're playing 2v2? Six v2? different kinds of units. They okay. might not necessarily all be on the board. In fact, you can have all one wiped out. Oh, okay. I got you now. Okay. All right, neat. All right, folks, what did we not say? What should we have said? Um, 
just to clarify. What did we say that we shouldn't have said? Well, that would take it too long. Um, Why did we say it? <laughs> How did we say it? And at what point in the video was it said? Here's the interesting thing. When we first put this together, I told the guys, I said, hey, one of the things we can look up is partnership games and trick taking, and none of us put a single one on the list. Because when I went to think about it, I couldn't think of any. I know Rook, but I hate Rook. I don't and, normally like partnership trick taking. And teach games, you, but so. I like the idea of the partner of having that person I'm trying to communicate with a little bit. Bridge has that stupid communication thing. What other ones are there? Keep I'll going. teach you. Which I've isn't never really a trick. So. You never played teacher? Oh. I don't like you complicated ladder climbing. Oh, games. here we go. Okay. Uh Euchre. I've played Euchre, sure. It's oh, here's one I didn't even think of actually. Rum and Bones, second edition. I like one V one. So do I. Okay. Crosstalk. That's from uh, <laughs> Crosstalk is good. Mondu, just that I already put on Mondu, Mondu, no, no, uh, uh, Navu. 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 Navu games. is one of those, yeah. But I like it's too close to Decrypto in this for this list. I put yes. Decrypto on. Yes, you're right. Uh, Nexus Ops. Can you play two against two in that? That must be a user variant. I don't maybe. remember. Maybe it's in there. I don't. I don't recall. But I've never played it that Actually, way. Actually, like that. three. What about Sonar? Not Captain Sonar. Uh, which I would have put on my list, but that's I'm not playing that with two people. What sonar, about sonar works. I actually prefer one versus one. Oh, okay. Because it's uh, you take turns, so it's fine. War of the Ring is not on the list for me for the exact same reason I wouldn't put Rebellion on. I'm, I only want to play one against one in that game. Especially in War of the Ring, it's really pronounced like, hey, you get to be the dwarfs. Also, you don't get to play for the first three rounds or whatever. I mean, it's not that bad, but it, it, there's like armies that are just not in play. The dwarves don't start until oh, they're... Oh, okay. Gotcha, gotcha. Yeah, no bridge. Do we look old yet? Besides Sam. Um, sabotage? Do you mean sabotage or saboteur? Saboteur is teams, but it's hidden teams again, so... Mm, okay, Which yeah. is I avoided those. I need to, you know, if you don't know the team. I also thought about, like I said, Shadowhunters, but... Yeah, but Shadowhunters is normally, for me, like a six-player game. So I don't, yeah. know, I don't know that I would ever pull that out with four. Same thing with Resistance. So there really, for me, isn't a lot of those games. Yeah. Uh, Cerebria, I'm not a huge fan of it, and you guys probably wouldn't touch it. It's a super heavy Euro. Oh, I like super heavy Euros. Spades? You don't. don't. Spades. I don't, again, I'm not a big fan played, of, of partnership trick-taking games. I haven't played Spades since high school, I think. What about Nirishima Hex as a 2v2? No. 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 I actually thought about it, but no. I definitely... Actually, no. No. <laughs> <laughs> uh, Though I will say the new Monolith Arena, I thought about it because there are more rules now regarding doing that. They even have pieces specifically for that. But, but you'd still uh, rather play one against one. Yeah. Got it. Um, Z should try to teach you. It's not as complex as it seems. Did you think it was complex? I'm not worried about not being able to handle it, <laughs> you know? I just don't like, A, the culture built around the game. Oh, my word, yeah. And, B, I don't think it's... Um, <clears throat> How many different ladder climbing games do I want to quote unquote get into? You know what I mean? It's a ladder climbing game. I like trick taking more than ladder climbing anyway. What about Mythic Battle Pantheon? 1v1. What about 1v2? There's, there's actually a few of those games that exist. I don't care. 5v3. There's too many people. That's true. Not Memoir 44, Overlord, because. I thought about it though. That's. 4v4. I could, I'll play it three against three. Where one person is the commander and plays a thing, and, but even that's kind of like, oh, I think I'll give myself a card that's again. Kinda lame. That's kind of lame. It's really you can't do that. No, I, I, no, I, Memoir Forty Four is just uh, you. You cannot play that for the two v two. Oh, I was just kidding about Bridge being for old people. Um, no, he wasn't. You mess up sometimes, Tom. Some people said Drop Drop Mix is a great 2v2 game. I would argue that yeah, Drop Mix is not a great game. It's a hilarious device to mess around with. Uh, okay. The game is just put colors down on top of other sure, colors. Sure, it's right. like a big Uno. Word Slam? 
I'm trying to remember how Word Slam plays. I don't remember that one. Nor do I. Which is why. Magic the Gathering nice. two-headed giant. <laughs> that could work, right? Yeah, absolutely. That could work. I like Magic the Gathering, the the original, you know, one versus one. But there are a lot of different modes, and and two-headed giant is very popular. So yeah. Yeah, someone said Summoner Wars. I know you can play Summoner Wars 2v2, but it plays so good at one. I don't want to I don't want to add to that time. It would definitely make it longer. Yep. Alrighty, horseshoes. <laughs> That's a good one. Well, if we're gonna do that, then bean bags or cornhole would be my choice. Yeah. That's a really good partner game where you're sure. on the two opposite sides. I just do crokinole if I want to do that, because I get to stay inside. Badminton. That is also true. Badminton. Yeah. You don't like badminton? No. You like tennis? Yeah. More than badminton? Yeah. How about well, volleyball. The ball actually goes where you hit it. How about volleyball with huge rackets? Have you seen like really good badminton like players? It goes where they hit it too. Yeah, but they're really good. Yeah, I know. I am not. But in my dreams. Get good. <laughs> Get good. Get good, bro. <laughs> Bro, do you even bat me? All righty, guys. Thanks so much for watching. Once again, we appreciate it. Someone said somewhere in here, like, who asked for this list? Well, actually, we do get requests for this kind of list. And mm -hmm. so we can't make all our lists, I guess, the, the popular stuff. we got to talk about different some, games. Yeah, yeah, well, yeah. Some of us. Um, <laughs> <coughs> the shade is back. Anyway, until next time, I'm Tom Vassell. I'm Z Garcia. Sam Healy. See you on the flip side, folks. Take care. Thanks so much for watching another Dice Tower video. If you enjoy our videos, subscribe to the channel for more fun, comprehensive board game coverage. Also, consider joining us at one of our events. Come to Dice Tower Retreat, a small, intimate gathering where gaming is king. Join us for Dice Tower Cruise, the largest board game cruise. Attend Dice Tower West in Las Vegas for gaming fun on the West Coast, or Dice Tower East in Orlando in sunny Florida. Dice Tower Conventions, the friendliest gaming conventions on Earth. I'm Eric Summerer, and you've been watching The Dice Tower.